Greetings guys, it is Stokecraft and today I've got a video for you on the upcoming Chinese new tank destroyers. We will take a look at the new tank destroyers from tier 2 all the way up to the new tier 10. I have to say there are some pretty interesting new tanks coming into the game. While we are taking a look at their statistics, I will show some gameplay of the new tanks in the meantime. This way I hope to give you the best preview possible of the new Chinese tank destroyers. So let's not beat around the bush any longer, let's get right into this. Firstly, in this new Chinese tank destroyer tech tree, we have got a new tier 2 tank. As we can see, it is the T26 GFT. It looks pretty similar to the already existing tier 2 Chinese, I think it is a light tank. It should be. As we can see, it pretty much looks like it is the hull of the tank, just with another superstructure on there with a tank destroyer gun in there. And that's, of course, what a lot of the tank destroyers look like. They just got the hull of their predecessor light or medium tank that's already existing in the tech tree but let's not focus up too much on that first of all the armor well no armor to expect really 80 millimeters at most yeah well we don't really expect the tier 2 to have that much armor whatsoever doesn't matter because it does get a pretty good gun a very good gun to be honest for a tier 2 it gets a tier 4 gun it gets a really really good rate of fire which gives it a dpm of 1500 which is pretty good for a tier 4 a tier 2 tank even also it gets a very good penetration 81 millimeters for a tier 2 tank which is just ridiculous it gets 130 millimeters of premium penetration not that you're going to need this of course 70 alpha damage but unfortunately the he rounds are a bit la lackluster only 25 millimeters penetration on there with only 20 millimeters of extra penetration it does get a pretty mediocre accuracy of 0.38 but a pretty alright aim time of 2.1 seconds. So this is a pretty good gun for its tier as we can see. The mobility is pretty good. It's not exceptional. Its top speed it is 36 kilometers an hour. And 10 backwards. The 10 backwards is really bad. Because if you get caught out in the open and you want to pull back. Then that's not really an option. As you won't be able to pull back quick enough. But the top speed of 36. It's pretty alright I have to say. As we can see, the traverse speed of the tank is 34.42, which is also alright. I have to say, there are a lot of tanks that have got a lot better traverse speed in this tank. Tree. But we'll, we'll come to those, we'll come to those, no worries. But I do have to mention a thing, and that is that the view range of pretty much all the tanks in this tech tree are very bad. Of course, that's very logical, because a few patches ago, Wargaming decided that they needed to nerf all of the view ranges of the tank destroyers because they wanted to make them more team compatible. Only 270 meters of view range, which is, yeah, it's just terrible. And I didn't decide to put any equipment on this tank, so that doesn't make it better either. Let's go up towards the T3 and we get towards the M3G FT. It just looks like an M5A1 steward hull with a gun shield with a gun on there. Let's first take a look at the armor. 25 millimeters all round. We don't really expect that much armor in T3 either, so don't expect to bounce anything. To you. Let's take a look at its gun now. It gets a pretty alright rate of fire, 12 rounds a minute. That's very good, actually. So we can see it also gets a really good penetration for its tier. 85 millimeters of penetration. Well, the tier 2 had 81 millimeters, so well, yeah, this thing doesn't get that much more penetration, but it doesn't matter. It does get a little bit more alpha damage, though, 115. The premium penetration is also lower than on the tier 2. Well, also, it's not also lower. It's lower than all the tier 2. It's 106 millimeters. But at least we get a little bit more HE penetration this time with 165 millimeters. Average damage is what I meant to say there. 0 0.38 accuracy. Bit mediocre as well. But a very good aim time of 1.9 seconds. But as we can see, the mobility of this thing goes up a lot. 55 kilometers per hour top speed limit. Very good. 12 kilometers per hour top speed backwards well still pretty mediocre pretty bad but it does get a really good reverse speed of almost 42 degrees a second which is yeah this thing feels pretty nimble you will also see that in the gameplay so let's now jump up towards the tier 4 the su 76 gft what i do have to mention right now is that from tier 4 up as we can see i put equipment on all of the tank destroyers so all the stats that you are going to see at the moment will have improved just a little bit just keep that in mind 
But as I said, the SU-76G FT, let's take a look at the armor first. As we can see, yeah, no armor to talk about really. 25 millimeters at most, 10 at the back, really bad. But it doesn't matter because this thing felt the most mobile while I was playing this tank. This thing felt the most mobile out of all the lower tier tank destroyers at least. 42.67 degrees per second, which is pretty good. 45 km per hour top speed, which is pretty alright still. 12 backwards is pretty bad. But still, this thing felt very mobile. And now we're going to get what's the highlight of this tank, which of course should be the gun. Again, a 12.5 rounds per minute rate of fire, which gives it a DPM of 2.37 with equipment and with 100% crew. It does get a really good penetration for tier 4, 128 millimeters. That's just really, really good. Also, really good preview penetration, 172. 160 alpha damage on the standard and on the premium shells. And we do get a little bit better HE rounds once again with 43 millimeters of penetration and 280 average damage, which is pretty nice for an HE round of this tier. But it does get a really bad accuracy, 0.4, that's just straight up bad. But it does get, again, a really good aim time. So it looks like we're going to see a pattern emerge here. Tier 5 time, the 60G FT. As we can see, this one is a lot bigger than its predecessors. Not that that really matters, though. Well, it does matter, as this tank doesn't really have that much armor either. You're not going to bounce anything, pretty much. And as this thing is a lot bigger, you're going to have to hide this tank much better on the battlefield to be able to not get killed in the beginning. It does get a really low amount of hit points. I now realize that I haven't really talked about the hit points of the previous tanks. Let's quickly take a look. 280, yeah, that's just bad. 160, 125. So, just to really quickly talk about the hit points as we all know tank destroyers have got a lower pool of hit points out of all the tank types in world of tanks you know that you need to be careful on the battlefield same goes for this tier 5 tank 400 hit points at tier 5 is pretty bad let's now take a look at the mobility of this tank it goes 45 kilometers per hour top speed forwards and 18 kilometers per hour backwards pretty all right mobility for this one this one initially goes backwards a lot quicker than the previous tanks in this tank tree, which is nice. But unfortunately, the traverse speed goes down to 36.51, which is noticeable when you play this tank, which was a bit unfortunate. But oh well, there's not much you can do about it. Also, the view range of this tank was pretty bad. I think it was like 340 or 350 meters. So that's why I even got forced to use coded optics and binoculars on this tank, because I really feel like in tier 5, the view range really gets to play a very important role in the battlefield. So that's why I pretty much got forced to use these two pieces of equipment right here. As we can see, this tier 5 tank actually gets a tier 7 gun. So let's take a look at this tier 7 gun. Again, a 12.5 rounds per minute rate of fire, which gives it a DPM of 2.6k. With this gun rammer, of course, attached to the tank. So keep that in mind. 145 millimeters of penetration, which is very good for a tier 5 tank. Just nothing to say about that. And an amazing human penetration of 220 just very very good for a tier 5 tank with 180 alpha damage which is pretty healthy as we can see the he round doesn't get more penetration but it does get a lot more alpha damage 300 alpha damage is really nice but a mediocre dispersion of 0.38 it does get that very good aim time again 1.7 seconds i think the pattern of the Chinese guns is pretty clear right now. We can pretty much conclude that they all have lackluster accuracy. But they all have a very good aim time. And a very strong penetration. And rate of fire. So pretty much the only bad thing about these guns so far is the accuracy. So let's see if this pattern is going to continue itself. Let's take a look at the tier 6. Which is the WZ-131GFT. Take a look at the gun first. As we can see it doesn't really get the same gun. It gets less rate of fire which is very unfortunate actually 7.5 rounds a minute which gives it a dpm of 2.2 with gun rammer and with ventilation so keep that in mind goes up with penetration again as we can see 181 millimeters which is very good for a tier 6 tank also 241 penetration for the premium rounds which is really good alpha damages go up to 250 which is also nice it's at least better that you get a little bit of an improvement from the tier 5 up also the he rounds get a little bit more penetration and a little bit more 
more alpha damage. 0.36 accuracy, pretty lackluster again, but still it's a lot better than any accuracy we have seen so far on the previous tanks in this tech tree. And a good aim time of 2 seconds armor, 35 millimeters at most. You can see that this tank has got a really well angled frontal plate here, but I don't think you're going to be able to bounce much as uh, it still won't have a very high effective armor thickness. So just don't expect to bounce anything with your armor right there. 550 hit points as we can see, which is pretty low, very low amount of hit points for a tier six tank. So keep that in mind again. The mobility of this tank, 50 kilometers power, top speed forwards, very good. 18 kilometers an hour backwards at least better than a few of the lower tiers but still not amazing and a very good reverse speed of 48 degrees a second well this thing didn't feel the most mobile on the battlefield it probably gets nerfed a little bit because of the soft stats that we can't see in the game but this thing nonetheless is very maneuverable tier 7 time this thing immediately gets a very big gun that's the first thing that comes to mind while looking at this new tier 7 tank destroyer. That is the T-34 2G FT. And let's first take a look. What should we first take a look at? The armor maybe. Because this actually gets a little bit more interesting. 70 millimeters on the front and 45 on the sides and rear. This 70 millimeters of armor is really well angled on the front. I took a look at the tank's GG and the armor of this tank varies from around 110 to 130 millimeters affected. So you might say, well, that's not very good. Well, it isn't very good, but it is good enough to be able to bounce some tier 5 tanks. But you pretty much won't be able to bounce any tanks from tier 6 and higher. As you are a tier 7 tank, you are going to be able to meet tier 9 tank. Very small chance that your armor is actually going to work. But unfortunately, even though we get a little bit of armor this time, we have got a very fat Polar on the top of this tank destroyer and we got a very small one as well well which is pretty much unhittable this one isn't modeled so if you want to penetrate a cupola of this tank you gotta choose this big cupola right there which is a bit unfortunate this thing has got 800 hit points which is yeah a little bit better but still nothing exceptional so now we get on towards the mobility 50 kilometer power top speed forwards very good and 60 kilometer per hour top speed backwards which is a bit mediocre again this thing gets a very good reverse speed of almost 43 degrees a second this thing again feels very very mobile but that's pretty much what all of the lower tech destroyers have been really if you think about it they've all been very mobile they've all had pretty much no armor but they will be very good at relocating quickly and just be ambush tank destroyers in my opinion yeah you're going to have to play a little bit of a campy uh play style but there's nothing that you can do about it because these things just don't have the hit points and the armor to be able to be on the front line that's what you will see in the gameplay of these tanks as well but let's take a look at the gun of this new tier 7 tank destroyer because this thing actually gets a very different gun from the previous tank destroyers in this tech tree as we can see it does get a really bad rate of fire which is unfortunate that now we can see why it gets a really good penetration with the standard 390 alpha damage that you would get on pretty much any other 122 millimeter guns this thing actually gets more penetration than the standard 122 millimeter guns 192 which is very good if we compare it to the is which has 175 millimeters of penetration the premium rounds have got more penetration than the is's i think it's 217 millimeters it goes up to 250 you will be able to penetrate your enemy e75s at least to some degree he rounds have got 61 millimeters of penetration with 530 alpha damage really nice alpha damage but well that's what you get with these 122 millimeter guns right 0.4 accuracy which is just bad and a bad aim time of three seconds which hurts a lot to be honest this is the first vehicle that really gets a bad aim time within this tech tree but i'm really happy actually that this thing gets a different gun as it adds more variety into the tech tree and i really enjoyed to play this tank on the test server this gun just gets a little bit of extra penetration and that's what i think really is the highlight with this gun compared to the other 122 millimeters so now we're going to go up towards the tier 8 the wz 111 1 ft it's pretty much yeah 111 hull with a superstructure on there with a tier 10 gun. So let's first take a look at this tier 10 gun. Because this thing actually is pretty alright. It gets 4.3 rounds per minute rate of fire. Which is pretty lackluster actually. It does get a really good DPM of 2.8k. With a gun rammer and with a ventilation. Keep that in mind. It has a really good penetration of 271. For a tier 8 tank that's just an amazing penetration. And it gets a really good alpha damage of 560. That goes the same for the premium round of course. The premium round has 340 millimeters of penetration, just 
an amazing penetration statistics. Its HE rounds have 65 millimeters of penetration, which could be better, but for tier 8, it's still manageable with 660 alpha damage, which is also really nice. The accuracy is 0.36, which is pretty mediocre, and has a pretty bad aim time, 2.8 seconds. But as we can see, we do have to take a look at this. It doesn't really get to carry that much ammunition. My loadout is fully used up and this tank is only able to carry 25 rounds. You better aim your shots well because if you miss too many shots because of the bad accuracy and the bad aim time, you will run out of rounds. I think this really can be a problem when this thing hits the live server. Also, this tank actually gets armor now, 180 millimeters on the front, which gives it around an effective thickness of 220 on the superstructure and a lot less on the upper plate hull and the lower plate hull of this tank. I think it was around 180 to 170 millimeters of effective armor thickness that's pretty good you at least have a very decent chance of bouncing enemy tanks this time because most of the tier 8 tanks have got around 220 millimeters of penetration so if you angle your tank just a little bit you will be able to at least have a decent chance to bounce some shots but do keep in mind as the sides of uh, the superstructure are angled as well that means that you will decrease their effective thickness if you angle the tank up the mobility of this tank actually goes down now because we do have to make a trade-off because you actually get some armor this time it goes only 30 35 km per hour top speed forwards, which is still okay. 80 km per hour top speed backwards. And it gets a pretty lackluster traverse speed of almost 27 degrees a second. This tank does feel a lot less mobile than the previous tanks in this tech tree. And that's what we're going to see. Because if we jump up towards the tier 9, we will see that the mobility is pretty much comparable. It's also a 35 km per hour top speed forwards. 16 backwards. And also that 26 degrees per second traverse speed. But as we can see, this thing looks a lot like an, uh, an ISU-152 or an SU-152, whatever you would prefer to call it. But this time, this ISU-152, the Chinese version, the WZ-111G FT, actually gets armor. Unlike the SU or the ISU-152, it actually gets 200 millimeters of frontal armor, which is really, really good, I think. On Tank CG, the effective armor thickness on the front of this tank was around 242, 250 on the superstructure. And I think it was around 220 to 180 millimeters on the upper and lower plate of this tank so if you want to penetrate this tank frontally go for the lower plate of course as this is the hull of the wz111 the hull is always the weakest part of this tank actually gets 80 millimeters of side armor this time which is pretty good which enables you to side scrape at least and it gets 60 millimeters of rear armor nothing really special about that it does get 1800 hit points for a tier 9 tank that's still pretty like luster but yeah well for all the tank destroyers, that's pretty standard, as we all know by now. Let's take a look at the gun of this tank. It gets a pretty bad rate of fire of 3.3. It does get a very good penetration again. 290 millimeters of penetration with 750 alpha damage, which is just really nice. A lot of people are going to like this gun a lot, I think. It does get a really amazing premium round penetration as well of 395. Again with the 750 alpha damage. It gets 90 millimeters of penetration on its HE rounds, which is pretty good actually. Very nice amount of, uh, of your HE penetration with an amazing alpha damage of 1100. If you will be able to penetrate an HE round in this tank, you will just be golden. That's what I'm going to tell you. It does have to pay a price for these amounts of penetration and alpha damage. It does get a really bad accuracy of 0.4. And this was really noticeable on the test server. Some shots in which an enemy tank just filled the entire aim circle. Just dipped down into the dirt. Uh, and that happens on occasion with this tank, unfortunately. It does get a pretty average aim time of 2.5 seconds. So I think it is time now to go up towards the top of the tree. The new tier 10 Chinese tank destroyer, the WZ-113G FT. This thing looks a lot like, yeah, what does it look like? Maybe a big a version of an object 704 or so let's take a look what this tank packs this tank packs 230 millimeters of frontal armor which is just really good and on tanks dg i think the effective thickness on the superstructure is around 290 to 300 millimeters of armor which is really good as we can see the armor is a little bit angled which increases its effectiveness luckily but unfortunately it does get weak lower plate and a weak upper plate 18 millimeters of side armor again just like the tier 9 still you can side scrape in this tank 
that is not a problem and it does get 10 more millimeters of rear armor goes up to 70 millimeters it gets 2100 hit points the mobility of this tank is pretty average as well 38 kilometer power top speed forwards and a 60 kilometer power top speed backwards which is pretty bad as we can see this reverse speed goes up to 32 degrees a second so this tank actually is a little bit more mobile than the tier 9 lastly we're going to take a look at the gun of this new tier 10 beast and of course it is pretty much the same as on the tier 9 tank it doesn't increase uh, with penetration or alpha damage and all that stuff but as we can see the rate of fire goes up just a little bit i think the accuracy goes up from 0.4 to 0.38 if i remember that correctly and i think the aim time also stays the same so you do get a little bit of an improvement when you go up towards tier 10 and i have to say i really like to play this tank on the test server as well the penetration in combination with the 750 alpha damage just feels really really nice really pack a good punch with this new tier 10 chinese tank destroyer what i think this tank can be is an assault tank as well as a long range support tank it has got the armor but just keep in mind if you are an assault tank just don't give them the inside of your tracks because if you will give them the inside of your tracks and the enemy is able to keep you tracked you won't be able to shoot them as you don't have the widest gun arc in the game if a tank destroyer gets tracked like this we all know the tank destroyer is pretty much done for so these were all the new chinese tank destroyers run down from tier 2 to tier 10 i'm really happy to see that we actually got new tanks in the game and i can't wait until these tanks hit the live server I hope you guys enjoyed this preview video. What I do want to mention is that this video cost hours and hours and hours to make. So I would really appreciate you guys leaving some feedback. Positive feedback would greatly be appreciated. But don't be afraid to send me some negative feedback as well. Let me know what I can improve to make these preview videos even better. For now, I'd like to say thank you guys so much for watching. And please leave a like as I did put a lot of time into making this video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see each and every one of you in the next video. Bye.